welcome back. So in previous video, we've installed this Service Bus Explorer, the tool that we can use to access the queues and topics, right? You can use that tool to drop the messages in that queue, simulating an action where a system would probably send a message to that queue, right? And then now in this video, we're going to look at how we can create a sample logic app that would read the messages from this queue. And then we'll also enhance the same logic app and not just receive the messages from the queue, but then we'll drop the same message back to a topic. And because you've created two subscriptions to the topic, you know, the same message now would be available to two more systems, right? So this is not a real life scenario, you know, we just want to see how the messaging would work alongside the logic apps. And we will get to the real life scenarios in the actual sessions then when we do the hands-on exercises. But this is just to show you how logic app and service bus would work together, right? So let's go to the Azure portal and let's create a logic app. Okay, so I'll, I'll click on this logic apps. And these are the two logic apps that we created earlier. Let's add another one and we'll name this logic app receive customer data from a queue okay so let's select the resource group and let's give it a name receive customer data from queue okay we'll leave the rest of the options as default and let's go ahead and create and let's create this logic app and it would create the logic app and deploy it for us and now it's ready for us to use let's go to resource and so if you remember when you create the logic app first time uh, when the code does not exist there right when there is no actions or no triggers you would be presented with this page where you can choose from many of the existing templates right so rather than choosing any template, let's go ahead and create a blank logic app, right? Let's create it from the scratch. Now, see how easy and how intuitive it is to build, you know, interfaces where one system is sending data, another system, you know, your interface is in the middle of two systems. It receives the data, it, you know, enriches the data and it does several things with the data. And these are, this is how the interfaces are built, right? Okay, so we are in this screen here. You can see that it's, there is no accents or nothing, right? And so the first thing that we do is trigger, right? So the first shape of every logic app should be your trigger. And all of the following shapes are called accents, right? So the trigger means literally how you want this logic app to be triggered, right? So we want this logic app to get triggered when the message is arrived or when the CRM system sends the customer data to the service bus queue, okay? So let's go ahead and search for service bus. So we already have plenty of connectors, right? To connect to every potential system. And if you search here, it would give you all of the reasons, right? So because we want to connect to this service bus, let's select the service bus and then let's see what all triggers do we have available, right? So here you can see your triggers and your actions, but because this is the first shape, right? First action, which is a trigger. Let's select from one of these triggers, right? So let's select the first option, which says when a message is received in a queue. And it also says autocomplete, right? We'll, we'll, uh, when we do the exercises in, in the further sessions, right? Uh, we'll touch base upon autocomplete and P-clock with more details, right? So right now let's select autocomplete. So whenever the message is received in a queue, this logic app, would be triggered. So the first option that's presented to us is to create a connection. Now, if you recollect in the previous logic apps, we created various connections, right? So this is something you create first time when you when you are connecting to a system. 
and then every other time when you do that it would automatically use that connection right so let's give it a name service bus connection one and let's select the service bus okay and let's select the existing key that's already created by default for us right create okay so connection has been created here you can see in the bottom connected to service bus connection one right okay so now it would also allow you to select which queue you want to pull into right so this logic app would be triggered when the message is received in the queue but you also need to define which queue right so let's go ahead and select this drop down and see how many options are available to us right okay so here you can see we created just one queue crm inbound queue so it's giving us one option let's select that option okay and then queue type right so there are few options here so the the there are two main uh, type of queues okay one is the main queue another one is a dead letter queue dead letter the message you know first arrives in the main queue and if there is no subscriber or there is no one listening to that queue then after a certain period of time it's a configurable window so after that window expires the message is moved to a dead letter queue so you can create a logic app to receive messages from the main queue or the dead letter queue right so right now we're just going to select the main queue here and then there's a couple of other options here with to choose from right so how often do you want to check for the item right so this logic app let's select one minute for now right so every one minute this logic app would look into that queue and see if there are any new messages okay let's click on the next step okay let's first of all save this logic app okay okay so or you know we, we can do several actions after this but for this exercise all we want to see is that we receive the message in the logic app right so let's go ahead and start make sure this logic app is in active stage so let's go ahead and see if the logic app is active right so it, it is enabled let's refresh it and so now we can use this tool to drop a message basically a customer data in this queue right and as soon as we drop the message in this queue you know every minute the logic app is listening to this queue and it would trigger and it would simply receive the message right so let's go ahead and copy so i have a sample customer data you can create any any sample xml you know uh, it doesn't have to be anything specific for the exercise purpose right but in the in the real world scenario you would be given an xml a very well formatted xml or a json file so let's copy the content and let's go to the service bus and you can right click on the queue and then there is an option to send messages to this queue let's click on that okay so let's remove this dummy message from here let's paste the content that we want okay and the format is xml and let's start right so if we start message has been sent and we can see there is one message now in this queue right and we can also click on messages to see the message body itself right here is the message body now bear in mind the logic app is polling this queue every one minute okay so let's refresh this queue okay so the message is now gone you see it's back to zero if we go to the logic app and refresh this right we'll see right now you see there's no run here but if as soon as we refresh we'll see the execution history okay so it ran at 10 31 and it succeeded let's click on this and obviously there's only one trigger right there's only one one shape we didn't do anything else but here if you click on that you can see that the message was received and and the actual data of the message is here 
it's it's obviously it's you know by default it's encrypted so you cannot see the actual data but this is the data this is the body of the xml and if you want to use this you know in in any other action you can simply convert this we'll, we'll do that exercise in the upcoming videos right but this is the body basically that was sent from the service bus queue let's do it one more time let's click on this service uh, sorry run history okay let's make sure there is no run here right let's go ahead and copy the same data again let's drop that okay it's already here for us right uh, we, 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 so this is from the last time the send message window is already open so you can simply click on start and you can see the message count is one and if you refresh that okay after one minute when the logic app does the polling it should okay there you go 1033 and we can see again the message was received right and here is the body which is encrypted so now we have received the message from the queue right now let's enhance the same logic app and let's send this message to a topic right so let's go to this logic app let's click on edit okay so now we can enhance the same logic app let's click on the next step and again select the service bus service bus okay so now you see the tab has moved to actions because we the first one was triggered anything onwards are actions right so we want to send the message to a topic so let's search for that action send a message right let's click on that now here you can see a queue or a topic so let's select here you can see crm inbound topic right let's select that topic and session id if we want to use but right now we are going to skip that and then what other properties you can send to this topic right so let's also the main part is content right don't forget the content because we want to send the actual message as a content so let's select the content and if there is any other properties you, know, you can make use of all of these properties and you will learn as we as we progress further but for now let's just select the content so now here in the content what we want to add is the content that we received from the trigger right so automatically if you see here in the dynamic content window it's giving me the options that whatever is available to me so when a message is received in a queue which is the first shape inside that shape it gives me the content of the message right so let's simply select this as part of the content of the send message shape right so what we're doing essentially is whatever we received as a content from the trigger which is the queue right we are passing the same content to this topic okay and let's go ahead and click save and if you recollect we created two subscriptions to this topic right so as soon as this message is sent to this topic this message would show up in both the subscriptions let's go ahead and review that one more time okay so this is the queue as soon as we drop the message in this queue the logic app would get triggered and then logic app would send the message to this topic which has these two subscriptions so we should see the message count in both of this here okay so let's go ahead and click on the send message button right and it's basically let's use the same message again let's click on start okay and here you can see that message count is one okay let's refresh it a couple of times and let's make sure that it's received from the it's received by the logic app 
and as soon as it's received we'll see that the counts here would increase to one and one okay okay it's gone so let's refresh this count okay let's refresh this one as well there you go right and let's go back to the logic app and see the run counts of these logic apps right let's go to the run history and obviously here we can see that the message was received and then the message was sent to this topic and here you can see the count of messages right so let's let's click on the messages when you when you your pointer is here let's click on messages and it would allow you to access the actual message right so let's click on that and there you go this is the message that we sent to the queue which was now sent to these two subscribers okay and then in in, in the real life scenario you know there would be other uh, other apps or other logic apps you know or functions uh, that would be listening to messages in this topic subscriptions right i hope you're following this and make sure you you know uh, follow all of these instructions and do the hands-on this is very basic but these are very you know these are the blocks that we are going to build upon because when we start doing the actual real world scenarios right we'll make a lot of use of all of these components so you make sure that you're following these instructions do this hands-on on your own account and if you have any questions make sure to use the slack channel and ask there right make sure you get all the answers and i'll see you in the next one thank you 